Um, man, if you were going to put your effort into anything, why not put your absolute best? I say this to other young people out there who are fighting to be not only just in this business, but fighting to be who they are, mm -hmm. fighting to show the world their worth. Friends, we are sitting here with the incomparable Chaz Roy, aka Charles Ray King Jr. Yes. Man, how you feeling today, big bro? I'm good. I'm feeling real good, man. Man, I've been looking forward to talking to you for a minute. Me too, man. Me too. Can we go back a little bit. We do. We right? do. It took a bit because I don't. I, I talk through my music, so right? you know that's what I speak and talk about things that yeah. I don't really talk about. But yeah, yeah. Well, I think I think one of the beauties of, beauties of this of this uh, source of kind of media is to so the fans get to know a little bit more about you. Yeah. And uh, it seems like you know whenever the fans know the artists a little bit more on a personal level, it just helps them connect. Yeah. A little I bit. That's kind of my my way of looking at it. I yeah. don't know if it's the facts but no, I true. know when I see artists and when I get to know them a little bit on a on a more of a kind of on, on the level uh -huh. it makes me appreciate their art just a little bit more I know, mean, on a deeper level yeah 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 I so uh, we've never sat down before um, for boom TV so Let's start at the beginning, man. Okay, okay. Where, where were you born? Dallas, Texas. Oh, Dallas, Texas. Texas. That's right. right. That's right. O Cliff, to be in fact. Okay. O A K Cliff. <laughs> the Cliff. Dallas, Cliff. Texas. Cliff, right? Yeah. <laughs> All right. And uh, so, were you raised mom and dad, brothers and sisters? Well, so I was raised between my grandmother and my godmother. So okay. my um, my. Yeah, I was raised between my grandmother and my godmother. My my biological parents were, you know, they were young, and so they they were young, and they just had other things, I guess, they had to handle. So, but I was lucky to be raised by my grandmother and my godmother. So, yeah. I love women because of those women. Right. I am a champion for women. I fight for them, and yeah. and that's why I'm so sassy. Yeah. <laughs> I bet. You almost have no choice. <laughs> and I'm joyous because of those two ladies, right, too. Right. I just, I don't know, man. Yeah. So I, I the upbringing was good. It was good for me. My grandmother was real, real big church lady. Mm -hmm. Church lady. Church of God in Christ. She wore no makeup. She wore no jewelry. She wore, wow. and her face was flawless. Wow. And so she just was that type of woman. And then my godmother was the woman who traveled and was the woman who, you know, she got out there in the world. And I always tell her it's her fault that I do what I do. Because <laughs> once she took me to California and once I saw people um, roller skating down the beach, <laughs> I was like, <gasps> and it was just regular people. But I was like, oh, what if there are a bunch of cameras around? What if someone was videotaping me? You're probably, a, you're probably a star from the beginning. <laughs> so, yeah, I knew right then, too, that I just wanted to travel for the rest of my life and um, just, I don't know, just constantly be in different places, just enjoying life moment to moment. So, word, word. Yeah. Siblings? Biological brother, my brother Antoine, and he is one year older than I. I will not discuss my age. You want to talk about that? You want to talk timeless, right? <laughs> timeless, timeless, effortless. I like and so, it. Um, yeah, one biological brother, and then my god sister, who I was raised with, and that's both of us. Yeah, that was right. a, that's it for siblings. Cool, yeah. man. So that's coming up. That's the early days. Early days. Any any contacts with your bio parents? Oh since, yeah, I, I talk to my bio parents till this day. Yeah. Yeah. So still contact with them. And, you know, there was, of course, growing up for me trying to discover and find out and asking all the questions. So I thought, you know what, Damn it. this opportunity to be real. So I was 
my mother left me on the porch, my brother and I. So it's very strange and, and it's whatever it thing happens, the way it is. And that. it happens. Yeah, and so she, sad, I was left happens, on the yeah. porch. So that's the, the real deal. Right. And um, I was left at my grandma, my godmother's house and my brother was left in my grandmother's house. Okay. And, and they took responsibility to raise us. Now with black folks, you don't, like I'm basically adopted, but we don't do paperwork. Right, like, right. like, and let me clear that up for the world. We, when you take a child in and it, when you make that decision, it's like when you make that decision to become a godparent, right. that is the dedication and the decision that you make. And so that is just what happens. And that's just what happens with black families. Yeah. Like they make that decision to take that child in. Yeah. And even though it's not the child and I basically live in an adopted situation, I was a adopted child, but we didn't go through it legally with yeah, paperwork because yeah. it didn't matter because right. that was now my mama you know so right. and I'm lucky because I got about four moms <laughs> I'm the same way I got a lot of moms too. you know what I'm you, saying you need that and sometimes then, yeah. now I said four I'm sure I'm going to get grief that I have you many have more than just four so yeah Word. so that's the truth and I yeah I'm, yeah, yeah and that is love you know what I mean because you, you, you hear these horrific, horrific stories about people left in you know, babies left in trash cans and mm -hmm. just like mm -hmm. done in, you know, and but say, yo, like I can't at this time in my life, please do do you know for me what I can't do for this child That's, exactly that there, there's a there's a degree of love there exactly you know I mean? and I and my biological mother I get my humor from her I get my um when did you guys re reunite fight. we would be back and forth as I was growing up okay. and it would be back and forth and yeah. it's still it was kind of interesting because it still was a battle because even though it was back and forth I'm saying a battle within myself because it's constantly asking that question well like why why aren't like why why am I not with you constantly, right, you know, right. versus. And so we would, there would be communication back and forth when I was younger, but it wasn't, um, constant communication yeah. and I didn't I lived with her rarely like really the truly the story of me man I'm here to tell you I um, though I was raised by my grandmother and my godmother I also you know I lived from house to house to house growing up yeah. um, for many many reasons you know um, sometimes I just got kicked out because it just sometimes you just get into a family's home where it's just the dynamic is, isn't right, right. Um, sometimes I got kicked out of homes because of just coming out and just being who I am and yeah. just being me and then you know so it was it was back and forth i have lived through my life growing up i lived with my god sister my grandmother my godmother a teacher <laughs> from school wow. my uncle my aunt uh, you know and then and it, it's it's been interesting it ain't been easy but i'm definitely who i am because of it and that's why i'm pretty hey, fierce so and that's texas man that's texas. so and, and this is all in texas and all in texas that's, that's got to be part of the bible belt and they probably look it at is. it it was um it was a journey especially growing like in high school and stuff i um well in that transition of just discovering who i was and i'm not and i don't want to make it about just being gay but just discovering me as like who i wanted to be as a man growing right. up and right. that was pushed on me hard in my family, you know, and um, by the males or by the by, by the, the females, females, by wow. the females, okay. and so um, I know in that transition, like getting kicked out from house to house, literally packing my shit up. Can I say shit yeah, in the show? Yeah. Oh, good, yeah. packing my. Uh, You're my friends. You're my friends. <laughs> Yeah. Packing my shit up in a trash bag and going from the next one place to the next. Yeah. So it was it was interesting. And then as far as like high school and stuff, being in the Bible Belt, you know, I like to challenge myself. I don't know why I put myself in these situations, but I like to challenge other people as well as myself. And so I remember where we had a cheerleading squad mm -hmm. and I wanted to be cheerleader right. but I didn't want to be just a cheerleader no, I, <laughs> I want to be it. captain <laughs> 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 So yeah. I remember things like fighting for that and fighting right. for that position right. and fighting to be that, you know. Yeah. I also love a pair of good short shorts. Yeah. So <laughs> I like, I, man, it was, I fought for that and I got on that cheer squad. I wasn't captain, but I sure was coming for yeah. it. I was coming for it. And yeah. they just, 
no one had had any experience like that in my neighborhood, in my community at school okay. and being in high school. And I wasn't trying to I didn't try to shake the, you know, the room on purpose. It's just what I wanted. And I've always been because things were not always constant in my mm -hmm. life. I knew well what I wanted, I had control over and I would fight tooth and nails for it. Yeah. You know, and things like that were happening in the Bible Belt. Mm -hmm. I also was a part of a very popular, and there is evidence of this, a very popular gospel choir in Texas. See, I've been trying to make this thing happen since I was a baby. Yeah. And so it's probably your calling. Uh, you yeah. know, and so um I remember I was in this popular choir and we got to be on shows like um Oh, I'm springing this up and I can't remember that name. Oh, this is going to suck. I'm sorry. We'll come back to it. We'll come back to it. But I, there is evidence and we were in the show and I directed this choir. I was the director of the choir. But Ooh. because it was a high school choir, we had to have an adult director. But like, mm -hmm. I remember fighting for even that. Like, I was like, man, I helped create this thing. And every time we got recognized, I was directing this thing. Yeah. And then even I was in another choir that was doing very well and was about to start a recording career. And I remember being in choir rehearsal one time and the director asked me to lead prayer and so I was leading prayer because it was just all this energy and dude I swear as soon as we stopped this one girl stood up who was pregnant which ain't nothing wrong with being pregnant but don't be throwing stones sister girl right. pregnant at I think she was maybe 15 which there's nothing wrong with that yeah. but I'm saying she stood up and she said to everyone I'm not listening to stopped my prayer said to everyone I'm not listening to a prayer from a dude like him and it went so forth so what my point with all of that is that I grew up in that type of environment right. and I survived that type of environment and I challenged that type of environment right. so yeah, good work man good yeah. work so so what uh, <clears throat> that's that's uh that's that lends to to a lot of like probably where you are now but Kind of going back to the beginning when you were just coming out, what mm -hmm. was that like? Was When was the moment and how did you approach that with your family first or friends first or how did you do that? Because I think a lot of young people, they wonder, everybody has their own story, yeah. but each story is is uh, inspiring to, the, yeah. to the, the next people that are coming up and like, wow, I don't know how to do it. Benny, I love you. Cause see, this is, I, I was terrified of this and I, I'm so happy to have this opportunity because now like, as it happens, I'm like, man, God, I didn't have this. So why not? Thank you. Yeah. I just want to say that sidebar. Okay. Word, word. That's word. And that's real. Um, I'm a creator, so I came out in very special ways. I um, I, I wrote m with my mom, my godmother, who I call my mama. Mm -hmm. um, I wrote her a letter, which really was a poem. Mm. <laughs> I laughed because I'm like, that's so crazy. Like, just tell her. But I did. That's how. Well, truthfully, you're an artist. You're an artist, right? So, and truthfully, <laughs> that's how I came out to people. I wrote in a series of poems and a series of songs. Wow. The weirdest thing that I think, but I love it because I'm unique. weird. That's unique, and so, man. yeah. And so, like, with my mom, I wrote her poem. With my dad, um, my biological dad, I wrote a letter um, with um, other, like I said, with other people that were important to me that I felt I needed to say those words. Mm -hmm. Because that's one thing that I I do realize in this generation. I think it's beautiful that we get to celebrate when someone comes out. Yeah. But I come from a generation where, like, you know, I, I've i been doing this for quite some time. And I've always been me. And I've been told that agents aren't going to sign me. I've been told record labels won't deal with me. And all this stuff. And it's been true. And I've had to fight through that. But, like, mm -hmm. I've been out in my career and in my life since I was this big. Mm -hmm. Like, I didn't even get to have a chance to really come out to the world because I've been me all the time. There's there's no point. It's just been always, it's, since the very beginning, you've always kind of been... It's all I knew. Yeah. It's all I knew, and I just, it's just the way it is. There was and never so, a piece of fear? Oh, always, especially because of church. Okay. Or, um, you know, when I have to tell my girlfriends, you know? Yeah. <laughs> So I, I bet you had some ladies. 
<laughs> but yes, the ladies is all in love I with I did. And you know what? I'm going to give a shout out. And I'm going to say my ladies, <laughs> Nicole and Rashonda was my booze. <laughs> sure was. And then my girl, Whitney, that I dated, that I fought my cousin for in the gym. Wow. <laughs> so... <laughs> You're a boy, man. Oh my gosh, they gonna die. They gonna die. <laughs> all right, all right. Oh man, just to name a few. But yeah. yeah, but yeah, I just, I think it was with those situations, it was harder because I didn't want to, I didn't want to break those, I didn't want to break anybody's heart. And not like break anybody's heart because I'm a heartbreaker, but I'm saying like, I really love those women and love mm. those girls and each and every one of them helped me, you know, sort of become me. And it yeah. was, and they, listen, those women, if anything, they taught, I don't know why they dug me, but they treated me with just, they are just wonderful women. Yeah. And they think I'm the finest thing in the room. And right. it just, that feels good. And that yeah. helps you develop and know who you are and all that stuff. So when so. you came out to them, how did they respond? Were they like, it's cool, baby? I like, won't say the names kicking. in this part, but okay. I will say one responded with some hurt because it hurt her because she yeah. just she when we broke up and that's the deal with this particular one when we broke up I was really too scared to tell her because I really loved her mm -hmm. and I sort of just we just broke up and she found out through the grapevine mm -hmm. and that hurt her. Another oh, one yeah. I, in gospel churches, instead of going to like um, haunted houses, mm -hmm. we have haunted holy houses. Okay. And so we would do this holy house, uh, this probably called something else, but those haunted church houses. And we would do it every year, every Halloween. Mm -hmm. And with one girl, I would go with her all the time. And um, I broke up with her. <laughs> at the haunted house. Oh. I have to tell this story because here's the deal. In this haunted house, at the very end of the haunted house, you have to go into a coffin and they would, in that coffin, you would hear music and, and then they would, it would be like, do you choose heaven or hell? And if you choose heaven, the door opens on the left. If you choose hell, it opens on the right. Like, who's going to choose hell? Right. But anywho, now what was funny about this, oh, they going to get me for this, but I don't care. What was funny about this, bro, is that you couldn't go in these coffins if you were not a couple, like a church couple. So they'd be the the, the couple would be in the coffin together. Together. Laying there. Laying in there. Teenagers. All right, all right. I ain't gonna say what church I went to. Y'all don't right. get mad at me. Don't get mad at me. <laughs> because they didn't know, because they trusted the couples, and I get that. Yeah. But it would be couples. So we're <laughs> Except that my girl and I was in that coffin, and that's when I decided to right then, right then. Ain't that so terrible? How'd you say it? Oh gosh, I said, "Hey, well, let me put this part in." She was also trying to um, make sure that we both. Um, lost our carts. Okay. All right. <laughs> and so this happened for like three years. And finally I was like, oh God. And so um, I said, hey, I just don't think, oh, this is so bad. I don't think God wants us to do this. So we gonna have to break up. <laughs> You guys can see how the room is looking at me right now. Wow. <laughs> it was bad. I was a young... And she said she had to say why. She was mad. <laughs> she was mad. She didn't... Well, she... Did you tell her because you were gay? It or did was... you just say you had to break up? I, with that one, I just told her I just had to break up. Oh, oh. okay. <laughs> she didn't get it. She didn't get it, but the next day I had no choice but to tell her because yeah. also my brothers and cousins were always with me yeah. whenever, because that, that's one thing. I always got fine people around me. Right. And so my brothers and cousins were with me and they forced me to tell her the next day. And wow. I, I did. She wasn't happy, but I was nervous. Like, right. I didn't know what to do. Well, you're young. You're a young cat. You know, that's not easy. So, yeah. It's not easy to break up with somebody if you're straight. First of all, it ain't easy to break up with somebody in a coffin. Yeah. <laughs> Can we just first acknowledge that world? Yeah, you, we, <laughs> no, those are extreme situations. Your timing. Your timing. Oh my god. <laughs> but you know what? Still, all those women we, were great. So it's cool. It's cool. cool. So yeah. So so this early coming out, and you know, and you were talking about how you. 
moved from these certain families, different oh, families. Oh, sorry. I've been there. I want to get him a little. You're good. Sorry, I glisten, folks, but this is the real deal. So yeah. here we go. All right. <laughs> okay. So we're talking about moving from family to family. And when, yeah. as you came out, uh-huh. their response to it was, we love you, but you can't live here because we don't agree with that. Or how, how did that go down? Unfortunately, um, the response wasn't that great. Um, like with my, um, with my dad, it wasn't great. I got kicked out of there with my um, god sister. It wasn't great. Kicked out of there, you know. Thing, things happen. Um, my grandmother... <laughs> what grandmothers are for mm-hmm. it was pretty much okay and you know okay. and she's a that's that's what i love about my grandmother too and and i would like to say this for people out there who do live with religious families that are out or not out um not all religious people have um some energy that is this hateful energy against yeah. people or at least my grandmother the experience my grandmother told me let me tell you something that preacher man everybody out here in this world even me they have nothing to do with your relationship with your creator yeah. and my granny don't say the word creator she say god but right. to me it's the same yeah. thing yeah. and she said they don't have they they have nothing to do with that and that instilled so much power in me from such a young young age and i think that i don't even think i know that's how i've been able to fight through a lot that i have been through cuz mm-hmm. it it hasn't been easy but i i tend like i said i'm a really joyous person so mm-hmm. most people in my life tend to know the joy part of it. Yeah. Um, that's what I share. Um, and then people in my inner donut, they know the real deal. And I yeah. have um, come through a lot of fires and, and been a yeah. reborn phoenix. And that's that's no joke. That's real. So That's legit, man. Thank you, thank you for sharing that, man. That's, that's, some of that's got to be heavy, yeah? Yeah, but it's, it's yeah. yeah, yeah. Did you come out to anybody? They're like, yeah, I knew it. Or was everybody like tripping? <laughs> So this is what's crazy. Pretty much that's what, every, yeah, I knew it. Even the girlfriends were like, after after you get to reflect on some stuff, yeah. like even those girls were like, come on, we knew this, you know? Yeah. I mean, and it's funny to me because like I said, I've always been me. Yeah. Um, and those girlfriends only was freshman and sophomore year. Um, Cause about time sophomore year came, I really got into me. <laughs> Nice, nice. And you know, and like, cause I was a cheerleader. I had my little shorts. I put my little, <laughs> the way my yeah. brother would always talk about how I would hold my books. And I know being gay is not, I don't want the world to think it's all about mannerisms. Right. But this, the reason why I speak about mannerisms is because my mannerisms encompasses who I am. Mm-hmm. And I always battle because I've always heard this, be masculine, be this thing, you know. Mm-hmm. When I used to, when my grandmother used to get phone calls, um, I would answer the phone and they say, oh, hey, little girl, can I speak to you? Blah, blah, blah. Mm-hmm. First of all, world, why people say, hey, little girl, weirdest <laughs> thing in the whole world. Anywho, when somebody answers the phone, is that weird? I'm just saying. Yeah. Anywho. <laughs> It's me. But anywho, they would think basically because of the my voice. I speak in a higher voice. Yeah. And I used to hate that. And now I love that and I celebrate that. Yeah. And guess what? That high voice makes me some money right. sometimes. So Beautiful. I'm just saying. Yeah, and it's legit. it's interesting because at growing up, no matter who you are, there's always these things that people sometimes want to put on you and then you allow it you allow yourself to think that that encompasses all of you Mm -hmm. so I had to learn how to break that shit down Mm -hmm. and I had to learn how to say the best way how I do it this gonna sound however it's gonna sound I got to a point where I started saying okay so that's the deal how can I make money off of it Mm -hmm. no joke Mm -hmm. because it keeps me from not hating it whatever I am who I am. And the thing is, is like, I am, I, I always tell people just because I'm gay, I'm not a rainbow. I'm many more things. I'm not a package of Skittles. Right. I am, I encompass so much more. And when you see a Chaz Roy performance, mm-hmm. you see that. Definitely. You see that. Definitely. So I know how to make the panties drop as well <laughs> as the boxers. Right. And yeah, that's you, the truth. Because I've, I've seen you perform several times. They amended that. And, and uh, I've seen you perform several times and you have you have like a strength that is, you have like this masculine aspect to you that's like this like, 
strength and you also have like this softness so you have the best of both worlds in the way that you were able to like exhibit your art yeah thank, and, and thank you're you. not you're not just you know soft you're not soft yeah. that's that's thank that's you, straight up. thank you thank you yeah. very much i yeah. re i really it took a long time to um understand that and accept that about myself because it will come out like people like you know when it, they say coding like it's just a part of of like we're not going to get into that political type of thing but my thing is this is every day you're around different groups of people yeah and so by being gay by by being a black man too and being in this world sometimes just with certain people I would allow myself to say well this is what this type of group is so I sort of would just I fit in you move. I figure you it out and yeah yes. and I, I used to think and it was on purpose but the deal is is no it's not me being fake or being someone different I actually anyone who knows me who truly knows me knows that when you sit with Chaz Roy, a.k.a. Charles King, a.k.a. Charles Ray King Jr., a.k.a. Chucky, you are going to get many facets in one conversation, in one experience, because that's just who I am. One, And it's not like being someone different or not knowing who I am, but I'm sorry, I respond to things moment to moment. Maybe that response recalls, it calls for a masculine reaction. Right. Maybe it calls for a feminine reaction. Right. Maybe, it, you know, so because our world's so stuck on this masculine feminine right, thing, right, right. and I, I think it is more attractive to me someone who is a part of this world that just there are many more elements to them than this doggone masculine feminine yeah, it's life. not black and white it's, it's not, not it really isn't yeah, yeah. And so i agree with that because I, I think people get they do get caught in that masculine feminine aspect of it but we all have mm -hmm. elements of our moms in us and we all have elements of our pops in us Thank and you. we have we have to be able to celebrate both. Thank you. Right? And it's not even even beyond masculine and feminine. You know, I've been able to hang with all types of people mm -hmm. because I don't just play that one card. I'm not just this one thing. Mm -hmm. I mean, I have hung out. I mean, I got stories, man. I've hung out with groups in Scotland that people said, you are not. So I remember they told me I was on tour in Scotland doing a theater show um, called The Karaoke Show. And we were in Edinburgh. Um, underneath the place that they had us living, there was this bar. And it was a lot of gentlemen going back and forth in that bar. And they, of course, they were Scottish men, but they looked white, right? Mm -hmm. And they all had shaved heads. Everyone kept saying, oh, those are the skinheads. Oh, shit. Don't you go to that bar. Those are the skinheads. Anybody who knows me, you can't tell me that. No. <laughs> you cannot tell me that. No, you know, they have skinheads now in I'm, Thank you. Now yeah. I'm intrigued. And right. now I'm like, well, wait a minute. Let me hear their part of the story. Because growing up in America, you know what we were taught, what yeah. skinheads yeah, were. Yeah, yeah. So then I get to this place. I knock on this door, and I never forget it. It was a really thick door. Open up the door. This man opens it up and he's like, What are you doing? What do you want? And I was like, Hey, I'm in this show called Karaoke Show at the Edinburgh Fringe Festival. I man, I just want to come see your bar. He slams it. And so I'm like, what the hell? But then I'm like, nope, you wait. Something's about to happen. Okay. He opens the door. You hear all these locks. I walk in. It's all these gentlemen. And it's like a little gang. Mm -hmm. And so, I mean, they all have shaved heads. And I'm like, what is going on? And then I see this um, beautiful, beautiful black woman. And she comes out. And then all of a sudden, this man hits her on the ass. And I'm like, what is going on? And then he starts kissing her. Then I go to discover that's his wife. Life. Then mm -hmm. I go to discover that skinheads in Europe has nothing to do with what race he is right. here. It is like a gang of men who were put together who was supposed to protect the neighborhoods. Mm -hmm. And you can look it up. It may not be, I may not be saying it accurately, right, but right. I know that it's the truth. Yeah. And it's just, I, I bring that up to say that like, that's what it is. I've always been that way. I can, I can walk into any room and this isn't being conceited, but it's because I love people yeah. and that's how I gather my stuff and that's how I'm artistic and but yeah like I sure can yeah. I can walk in into any room and I'm here to tell y'all here today I've walked in many 
right. Well, you know, you get what you give. You know, if, uh-huh. if you give love and acceptance, that's what you're going to get back. You know, mm-hmm. always. Mm-hmm. And uh, America, the United States, is just it has a unique way about itself because mm-hmm. we have a, a strong, strong history of racism. But, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but you know, in 2021, moreover, you give you give love and you give positivity mm-hmm. and you give acceptance mm-hmm. and. You're you're more likely to get that back. If yeah. You, if you go in there like guns are blazing, I'm gonna fuck all y'all. That's yeah. probably what you're gonna get. Back, Amen. Right. Amen. Very yeah. true. That's very true. That's you know, it's, it's very interesting. I'm sorry. Am I getting off track or can I? I'll I'm just moving, share you're stuff good. Good. and you could place it. But like, um, yeah. with with speaking about just this America and all that stuff, I have to share this again as well. You know, I used to joke all the time. I don't. I've only tried my hand at comedy once, but I usually joke all the time to friends and I say hey if you get if you get pulled over for the males you know just act really really feminine I used to say act really really gay and cause the people they get scared of that shit that's been my power I'm right, like you right. you don't want to fuck with me I'm bind up I like to make somebody think about some shit right. now I don't know if you want to put that but that's the truth yeah. and so um I would make this joke all the time and, and even in this climate of the world and I, I, I've i been blessed like that those things like that did not happen to me but let me tell you this past summer because mm-hmm. I, I don't share this with people I was I got a gig in Pigeon Forge Tennessee and I was doing a show and um, I happened to also have a friend that had gotten seasonal work there I it was probably around 10 15 that night that I had left my hotel room and then I was driving to go visit this friend who worked at one of the companies. Um, Tennessee is one of those places that you go for seasonal work for performers, you know, right. and so, um, and other type of workers. But I go, make a long story short, I go to go see him. I get lost. Anybody who knows me, I need a driver because I get lost all yeah. the time. So I'm like driving around, driving around, and by this time it's getting to be 11 o'clock, right? And so I'm driving, driving. I finally go to the, he, the, my, my friends, the place that he works, and I drive up there. And I stop the car, and then I continue to drive because I'm lost. But then all of a sudden, there's this uh, um, car following me. And this car follows me, follows me, follows me. And finally, I drive back to that place. And then I stop and I, I put my head out the window. Not smart at all. But I just, I don't know. I just got, I was so frustrated. And I was like, hey, instead of this you, car that's following yeah. you? Yeah. And I'm like, because they finally, I'm parked in front of the building. Now, I thought to myself, if you're going to park, you have to park in front of somewhere where there are cameras. And this is real world. So we have to think about this type of stuff. Are you tripping at this point? Like, you can like some racist people I, behind you? Dude, I, at this <laughs> point, I just, I, I think... I wasn't tripping yet. I was just, I was more frustrated because I was like, are you kidding me right now? Because I hadn't experienced anything you, like this. You were being tailed. Yeah, I and, was, be- and I'm smart enough to right. know I was being tailed. Yeah. So then I'm parked here. He literally is parked right here with his light shining on me. And I'm like, turn off your lights. And instead of just following me, why don't you help me? Well, you can see I'm driving a rental car. Mm-hmm. You can see, you know, you know the difference if you're yeah. in a small town, you yeah. know, you know, I'm not from here. And can you help me? So then literally, and I'm not joking. I said, help me, sir. Please help me. His words were, what you doing around here, boy? Oh, shit. So I said, okay, dude, I'm trying to get to the parking garage for the people who are the employees that live in employee housing that works for this certain company. And so um, he said to me, well, it's down here and around. And I said, okay. So I followed where he told me. He thinks I'm a dumbbell and I can see he's still following me. There's also another officer in the car with him. I finally get to my- Wait, this is police? Well, no, 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 wait. These oh. are, the, well, this is security. Okay. But, and so this is security, but which is weird. Why security following me like right. this? But anywho, this is security. So then they follow me to the parking garage as soon as y'all. I I, I, I don't want to swear on nothing, but this shit happened. Twenty twenty one to me. I pull into the parking garage as soon as I park. 
about five SWAT cars surround my car. Official in, like police official officers. Official police officers wow. in a U. They surround me in a U. Um, they all get out their cars, put, I see them from my rear view mirror, put their hands on their guns. And I'm just surrounded. I'm surrounded by them. I'm surrounded by security right now, just for not knowing where I was. And then cop, two cops come up um, on the side of me. I immediately call my family and I make sure that I just leave it on where they can hear the whole conversation. Yeah. And literally they come up and they say, hey, Somebody called and reported and said that somebody was dropping off luggage at places. Just a car just dropping luggage off at places. Did you drop any luggage off at places? Anyone with some common sense, and this is the thing with the world. If you ain't been through it, then it's hard for you to understand. But with the knowledge that I have, mm -hmm. and I, I may not be as what they say a street person, but I know the streets. Mm -hmm. My brother and my cousins taught me that. Mm -hmm. and. I knew that basically they were referring to like as if I was dropping off drugs mm. and like it, it was a horrible, horrible experience. And I share that with people because it happens. How it happens and it's weird because I sat and I told them and I said, oh, my niece was so mad at me because she said you could have gotten killed. But I didn't know what else to do but to stand up for myself. Mm. And I said, sir, I am not from here. And I think it is absolutely ridiculous when I ask for help, when I stop and ask for help for, from your security guard that all of a sudden a SWAT team of cops come around me. I said, don't you think that's strange? And don't you think that someone calling you about luggage being dropped off is such an idiotic thing to talk about, to bring a SWAT team about? I said, so the truth of the matter is, my friend, is that you instead got a phone call from that security guard and that security guard made up some bum excuse and now you are here harassing me. Mm. And I want you to know why you're harassing me my family is on the phone listening to every single moment and mm. that's how i got out of that wow Dude. so yeah, that's rough homie. so yeah and that that's just being a part of uh well, tennessee of a crazy a year no. i'll never go back and that that would just happen just this year that just happened this year wow. you, you you probably thought you were Almost a done, uh, done, done, right? Done. Wow! All these cops was white. All of them. And they, it's just a fact. They was, they, was they just like angry kind of? Like, That's the, the thing. They were like even laughing because they knew it was ludicrous. And the thing is, is thank God, like I wasn't. Thank God I wasn't. I was stern and stood up for myself, yeah. but I wasn't angry. I wasn't yelling at them, yeah. but I also let them know that I was also whatever happens, I'm protected. I made it. I make it from this, but you mofos are going, somebody's going to know about it. Yeah. You know? Well, that's, you that's, know? That's how it is and, these days, um, man. You got to have that on record, man. Yeah. And so, and that, it's sad that that's the life we live right now, but mm -hmm. that's just what it is. It is what it is. Wow. And um, that was just, yeah, man, it's interesting. Did you ever have to deal with any racism when you were in Texas? All the time, yeah. but it was never to that extent. I've never had to deal with cops like that. Mm -hmm. um, I do remember moments growing up, like with one moment with my sister, with my god sister. Um, she had gotten pulled over, and we were like, why is she getting pulled over? And they took forever to come over to us, and then they finally told her it was because she had a, a her muffler was low, mm -hmm. which, you know, we hear excuses like that all the time. Yeah, yep. And all yeah. you can do is just say, okay. Yeah. And, you know, they started, like, telling her that they told her to get out of the car. Mm -hmm. She's very smart. And my sister is going to say, she's like, no. Mm -hmm. And then they came, went around to my side. And I remember this as a kid. They came around to my side and started telling me, young man, get out the car, get out the car. And I, you know, it's just what you hear growing up. You comply, like, don't get hurt. Yeah. And I started to reach for the door. And my sister said no. And she said, lock that door. And then she told them from her side, you have no right to ask him as a passenger, especially as a kid, to get out of this car. Because you mm -hmm. have no reason right. for a muffler. Right. You you don't have a reason to check him. Right. And so, but that's the type of thing that happens. Wow. So. 
What about here in Colorado? You've been here in Junction for how long? Off I've been in Grand Junction. I've been in Grand Junction like almost over 15 years. I came here, um, I had a two year contract at the Cabaret Theater because mm -hmm. um, like, I am a performer, man. I, I act, you know, I sing, I yeah. write, I record. And so, um, and I went to school for musical theater, the yeah. American Musical and Dramatic Academy. I gotta give a shout out to them because yeah. I am still working to this day because of that school. Nice. And so, um, um, I came here with the contract with the Cabaret Theater and um, I stuck around because I made family here mm -hmm. and sometimes your biggest family are the ones that's not blood you mm -hmm. know I believe our creator um, blesses us with tribes and so I've been lucky to have a tribe here yeah. and that's why I come back and forth um, I'm always back and forth because by grace I'm always working and I'm going out of town and I have a gig and I do that mm -hmm. and um, but as far as the question have I dealt with that here in Colorado yeah I have um, and I know these stories seem dramatic but y'all, I'm telling you, this stuff happens. It's real. And it's I never real. even There's talk. No dramatics about it. I've yeah. never even really, bro, I've never even talked about like the stuff that's going down in Colorado. Mm. I'll give you just an example. I was riding in a taxi. Um, not gonna mention the taxi's name, but I was riding in a taxi. And so I um, we I needed her to go through McDonald's. And already from the beginning of the ride, I was like, man. Just something feels wrong. Not wrong, but her energy wasn't of the energy of my yoke. Yeah. I tell you that. She wasn't feeling it. Well, yeah. And I was like, hmm. And I'm like, why is this woman so mad? We go through McDonald's, but I can see that she's worried that she thinks I'm not going to pay. She thinks I'm going to stiff her because I had her take me through a drive through first. And so I'm like, whatever. So then by the time we finished getting the food, my soul said, hey, man, pay this woman and just tell her to drop you off right here and all in injunction know the store that's next to the Mickey's, right? Yeah. And so I have her drop me off there and this woman, no joke, joke, truth, truth, gets mad yells out of the car because I didn't tip her and I tip but she was something wasn't right and I knew I was right because this is what happens next I get out of the car and um I start walking she puts her head out yells calls me a faggot nigger whoa and she says the f word first you effing faggot nigger speeds up her taxi and clips me whoa no joke I called the cops. I had it investigated. I had them look at cameras. I had them do everything. I even had them go to the taxi people. The taxi company acted like she didn't work there anymore. The um, cops, I mean, and with the cops, I do believe they did all they could do. Mm -hmm. There wasn't much they can do, right, you know, right. but it was a crazy, crazy experience. And that's the type of stuff that sometimes I you have dealt with. Well, just anyone who is different, right. when they're being discriminated against or being treated less than, that's what they deal with, you yeah, know? I real. mean, I even had, and that's just, this is truth and real, sorry, GJ, but you know, there's also been, you know, I haven't gotten some gigs because of who I am. Mm -hmm. You know, I've even had other bands that maybe they just don't think in the way I think or think the way that my fans think about acceptance of all people. Mm -hmm. Cause I don't have just gay fans, trust me, yeah. you know? And so, yeah. you know, and I it's did. like, it's, it's so, it, it, they just not being cool with that. I've had, especially when I first started here and I had a band, um, I was coming up and getting noticed I, there were people that tried, to, they did what they had to do to blackball me from certain events mm. just because of being who I am. Getting wow. kicked out of church choirs, I ain't gonna name the church, mm. but there was one church that I sang for here that I got paid to sing for. And, um, you know, I invited all of the people from the youth group because I that's the thing I am gay I am black I am proud and I whatever folks I'm a very spiritual person mm -hmm. and that's what it is so you know I attend church sometimes yeah. you know and so I was with this group and I invited everyone to come see my show long story short one of the ladies from the group went back and talked to the pastor and talked to the music director and said his type of life can lead people astray so I don't think he should be in this group anymore. And I be doggone. Those people took me to Starbucks to fire me. Wow. In a very holy way. 
know how they do it. We need to talk to you. We, we need to have a conversation. We need to have a conversation. We need to talk. Um, and that's how it is. It's just not working it's, for us. It's so, like, oh, man, get out of here. <laughs> so that's how I was. Now, yeah. there, I have to say, because I didn't mention names, but I will say, because people will watch this, there are people from that experience that are still associates and some friends today. So yeah. they didn't feel that way. Yeah. But it is what it is. But that's this business. And, that's, that, and that's, there's politics. There's, there is so politics. Here. One man. person that mm-hmm. has some pull mm-hmm. can end all that. And the people that are there, they're uh-huh. like, nah, man. Man, nah, but they don't have that voice because they don't have the pull. They don't have that political power. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's what's up, man. That's what's up. Sorry. Wow. I keep glistening. <laughs> that's beautiful, man. That's beautiful. So, uh, all through all the things that you've been through, it sounds like, you know, you've had a lot of, you've had to have resilience and you've had to fight. And there's been, you know, you talk about moving from place to place and these that ha- for a young child, for a young person that has to feel like you're kind of a little bit like out of control, you know, you're not in total control of your mm-hmm. of your life. And in certain aspects of, of, of you, when you talk about um, the cheerleading, the cheerleading mm-hmm. thing, mm-hmm. Like you want control. That, you're a solo that, artist. You yeah. are the controller of your art. You're yeah. the controller of your of your life. And you stand up for yourself. You sold yeah. up to those police in, in Tennessee. Yeah. So, you know, the. Amen to you, big bro, because that is that came from all that that you experienced. Thank you, bro. And, and that's probably why you're alive right Fresh, now. man. You could have been, you could have been RIP 2021. I'm here to tell you, my granny and my mama, my godmother, they were um, they were strong women, and not to discredit any other women in my life, but those women. Yeah. Um, I saw them go through a lot and be resilient. And mm-hmm. I always was like, man, if they can freaking bounce back, that's, it's so funny because no one else has nicknamed me this, but my last name is King, but I call myself the bounce back King nice. because I go, I really do. That's just life. And I go through a lot and, and I'm human just like everyone else. Right. Um, even though I'm a galactic human, <laughs> um, I, um, when I, when I fall, I, I, when you really are a passionate person, when you, when you do stumble and when you do fall, you fall hard mm-hmm. and sometimes I don't do the greatest things to um, show that I love myself mm-hmm. but I have to fight through that tooth and nail because I refuse I refuse I refuse I refuse to be um, any of these things that are negative that are not um, that are not in what my legacy is to be. Yeah. And so therefore I fight because my legacy is not gonna be all these other things that everyone else thinks. And it's so funny. It's funny when you walk around town and you hear rumors about yourself. Mm. <laughs> right. Right. And you know, it's yeah. funny and it's, it's hilarious because people, they don't know. It's really, really strange. And also with me, and I'm not a celebrity, but I make myself known. I'm very visible mm-hmm. and that's fine. I do mm-hmm. that on purpose. and um. But, you know, when I'm creating, I tend not to be that whole thing. So sometimes I'm around people and they don't even know. And you hear they talking about you, this rumor, this thing that's happening. And so I'm like, "Mm -mm, that will not be my legacy, my dude. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, no, it just will not. And so, yeah. That's yeah. just how it is, you know. That's a good message. That's a good message, man. Being the bounce back king. I like yeah, that. dude. I mean, you have to be like with situations. I have always, by grace, I've worked hard and like I've auditioned for shows and I've gotten on those shows and mm-hmm. and example I did I auditioned for The Voice and I can talk about this now because I read that contract recently mm-hmm. <laughs> and I the years have passed but I okay. really was I worked very very hard um, I got the opportunity to be um, a part of The Voice um, now according to contract and to them I wasn't on the show because they didn't show my episode mm. but you can't deny when you I, I, like how am I supposed to talk to people people know who I am and they see me in the promos. They Mm -hmm. see me in the commercial. They even see me during the shows. They just didn't show my audition, Mm -hmm. you know? And so it's interesting when it's something like that because then people in the world start to say, well, you lied, you this or you wasn't. I'm like, well, dude, I don't know how else to prove it to you. And there are pictures and yes, I did sing in front of Christina, uh, you know, and all the other folks, CeeLo and, Mm -hmm. and, and, uh, I, the others. Right. <laughs> I'm so sorry. They're gonna be so bad, but yeah. I can't remember. I don't know. I love Chrissy. Yeah. Thanks, Shelton. Thank you. That's so sad. But I, 
man, listen, he said, Blake. He said, he said Blake Shelton. Blake Shelton. I'm sorry. <laughs> Blake Shelton and Adam Levine. So there, there you, you go. go. There you go. And I can also say, and CeeLo, I, well, ooh, y'all should have put me on camera. Here's the deal. I auditioned for this show, and I sang my face off. And after we got done, none of the judges turned around. And But then after that happens, they turn around to say something to right, you, right? Right, right? So everyone turns around. Adam Levine commented on my boots because I have fierce fashion. Great. Christina commented on my voice. Great. And I love that boo-boo. I love Christina. And then Blake was just a little confused by me because you want to know what world? (laughs) This black dude right here wore a rainbow tutu. (laughs) And I also had on a pair of hot pink Doc Martens. And it's so funny because my poor mother, you know, at this time, she was um, sick. And she at least got to see me on that commercial. But um she was she just she's mortified that that's what I was wearing and uh but I was like man no and at that time um I had a lot of friends who had, were committing suicide and that okay. was my story and that's what okay. I wanted the world to know right. and and it's so interesting because all I kept people wanting to know was were they gay were they gay and I was like I have so many more friends and so many more family and that's all gay people we don't just live in a world of rainbows and lollipops right. you guys right. and so like I was trying to really bring that story and let them know that all people are hurting you know yeah. so yeah. I diverse I'm not gay and you saved my life that's my friend right. over there <laughs> he says, I'm not gay and you saved my life. <laughs> that's yeah. my brother, man. Yeah. And so, but yeah, so I divert, but that was me and that's how I was. And I say that because that's why I was saying Blake didn't know what to do. Blake just was sort of speechless. Right. Now, we're all waiting for Mr. CeeLo Green to turn around. CeeLo, who I was CeeLo, ain't no disrespect, bro, but it happened, and they ain't gonna show the footage, but it happened. CeeLo turned around, and these were his exact words. Man, you got grit, you got style, you got talent. You do exactly what I do. Well, I can't pick you. Why you gonna pick me? And I being me. <laughs> What'd you say? <laughs> I said, well, <laughs> oh, see, and that's crazy because years have gone by. Now I'm like, man, do you know the exact words? I will tell you this. I said to CeeLo that he was basically scared because, like, why are you scared of me, dude? Like, if, if that's the truth, come on, man. If that's we could, man, you want, I could teach you how to make even more millions. Mm-hmm. That's the game I run. Mm-hmm. And unfortunately, he lost out on that. And I mm-hmm. will be able to prove that one day. And that's no hard feelings. But it's weird because, you know, when you do these shows and stuff, they make you sign contracts and you have to respect that. But time has gone by. So you can't talk about it for a certain, for amount, a certain of time. amount of time. But, man, I have grown and years have gone by and time. Time has gone by. So I can say this. And that's the thing. Like, if I don't say it, no one will ever know it happened. But I say this to other young people out there who are fighting to be not only just in this business, but fighting to be who they are, Mm -hmm. fighting to show the world their worth. Um, You come across that. And like, I have come across some of the greats and some of the greats have turned me down. Mm -hmm. I auditioned for American Idol. I got all the way to the judges of American Idol. Simon told me yes. Simon was in it to win it. Mm. Paula and Randy were the ones who voted no for me, mm. you know? And there is footage of that too. Wow. Like, you know, they, they all, I have a journey. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You hear people going through this and then they don't make it to like the past the first round or whatever, or they can't sing, but maybe they have a, their friends are gassing them up. But uh-huh. like, getting to the point where you're in front of the judges and what's that like? I man? have the, it's, the most amazing feeling and no matter how any of those situations ended up yeah. I still I am powerful for it. Do you remember what you sang? On any um, um, with, with the voice I sang um, um, Hard to Handle the Black Crows version but if anybody who knows music and knows pop culture that Otis Redding Okay. At first. All right. All right. And so, and that's what I did. I do soul rock. You know, now I, I, I've evolved as an artist. I don't just do soul rock. Like I got pop feel. I got, I mean, I'm even working on country stuff right now, nice. but that's just who I am. Yeah. Like I do not, I You're can't just, yeah. And I don't want to stay in this one stagnant thing. Yeah. And music was created for 
everybody. You're not going to tell me I can't sing a certain genre. I can't be in a certain genre. Exactly. So I just do what I do, yeah. you know. But then also I was lucky. I did, those situations, I then um, moved to St. Thomas and I had, I started touring St. That's what I St. did. St. Thomas is the In islands. the Virgin Islands. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I moved to St. Thomas. Um, I had been working in Alaska for oh, a while. Man. Why'd you leave... Alaska and St. Thomas. Man, Come on, I man. love them. I will. That's what I we know. did. Like, <laughs> we all out. I did it. I'm a yeah, seasonal. Like, oh, yeah. I'm like that's a seasonal fine. worker yeah, so because that's the thing. You got to know how to hustle. Right. And so I'm the type of person that I don't like to. <laughs> I've had nine to fives, but that is not what I was put on this earth for. And so I therefore I find out how to, sometimes when the work ain't happening, mm -hmm. when I ain't booked, I find out how to be booked. And so mm -hmm. I went to Alaska and I um, was a bartender who slid into a rail guide position because the rail guide got to have a microphone. Mm -hmm. You're not going to be around me without a microphone. Right. And you think I'm not going to take what I'm saying not tape but right. I'm not going to so do on the what trains, I'm going to do on the trains you're like doing the conductor you're doing talking the, about what's going down talking about what's going down you singing too and I added singing <laughs> to it I yeah, had to <laughs> I added a whole man those people had the journey uh, of the, they got their money's one word. of the bosses was like why do people hug you when they get off the train are you asking them to hug you and I was like well, are you kidding me no man like well, we just shared something amazing yeah. I sit up here with these people some of these people it's the only trip that they're ever going to take. Some of the people, it's the last trip they're going to take. Right. You know, there are all these memories. And I felt I'm not going to be just a real guy. I'm going to be an experience. And that is what I knew those people were taking away from that. And, yeah, I incorporated singing in my show. I would sing, um, I see trees are green, red roses too. And I watch them grow for me and for you. And I think to my Myself. Oh, what a wonderful world. Because come on, we're in Alaska. We get to see all this. Yeah. And uh, man, I want you to know. That's an experience. Thank you. Yeah. And that's the type of person I am. Like but when that. I went to St. Thomas, basically, I fell into another um, singing reality show competition show, which you can see if you search it on TV. Okay. And that was called Icon of the Islands. And I won second place there. Wow. I can't stop crying. Ah, they ain't ready for this. Great job. Great job. Very powerful. I heard some Luther Vandross, some Prince. I did give you a nine. A nine. But I'm a professional because I've been doing this since I was in church, man. This is what I eat. This is what I breathe. This is my life. So it's not my fault that I want this. So, I don't yeah. know how you ever left St. Thomas, man. Um, I... I, I I don't know. It's me. It's me. You're a mover and a shaker, man. It's You're a rolling stone. It's me, man. You're a rolling stone. I love it. Yeah. You got to keep moving, man. It's just, it just makes life a little more interesting, yeah. yeah? It does. It does. Cool, man. So here in Grand Junction, uh -huh. uh, they have kind of, you know, like downtown, there's a this artist. They call it, with air quotes, the scene, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So... The first time I saw you perform, you were having, uh, it was at Mesa Theater. Mm -hmm. It was about three, three or four years ago. And uh, it was right before you were getting ready to leave to go do one of your things somewhere else. I'm not sure. Uh. But you were like, at that time, because I didn't know, I was kind of new to the scene, just mm -hmm. as an observer mm -hmm. and just like learning about all these different artists. And mm -hmm. we have so much talent in this town. Absolutely. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Related to the scene, did you ever feel like you're part of the scene or do you feel like you're part of the scene? How does that feel? It goes back and forth. When I um, had a band, um, my band was named King and his naughty bunnies. Okay. Um, <laughs> if you search and search hard, you can find some of that music, Chaz Roy fans. All right, all right. And um, the real fans find it, and that's the truth of it. And I worked hard with that band. I got signed to an independent record label. That's why I stuck around Junction, because I was creating. Mm -hmm. When I was in New York, love New York, um, but I was creating what other people wanted me to create. Okay. And unfor not unfortunately, but fortunately, like I'm just that dude that I'm like, 
you're not quite telling it how I think the, the not my vision and I have to be true to myself and I got to tell my story and be mm. a reflection of you know right. and so Junction I have to say allowed me to do that okay. so with with my tribe and with my fam I get this band we building up we building up um, I get signed to an independent record label um, this independent record label was out of St. Louis um, not only was she out of St. Louis but unfortunately she was a scam artist too wow. like they they man and that it, that was a journey. I had to fight out of that. Was this a few years ago? Or oh, how? years ago oh, when okay. that, when I first got to Junction. Okay. And so what's crazy is that unfortunately I'm not talking shit about any of the bands or any of the musicians that I've worked with. Mm -hmm. But you know when the world we show, especially we live in a social media world. Yeah. You know we. I click a picture, that's what I'm showing you, and that it, it, we immediately think this is what's happening. So mm -hmm. what I'm trying to get you is that when you get signed to a label, when things start moving for you, other people think that you, you about to blow up. Mm. And they think you're getting secret money. Mm. They think you're doing this. And I'm like, I'm working hard. Mm. And when you're not writing the music, when you're not booking the gigs, when you're not, you know, like I was doing a lot of that work. And unfortunately, some experiences of some musicians, they wanted more and they weren't putting in all that work as well as they still thought I was getting all this secret money and stuff. So money in your in your band that in you were, my band. This was the naughty bunnies. I, yeah, at first, that, and what some of the not all my naughty bunnies. Anyone who's in my they know that not all the installments, but some it went from this. Uh, the first installment of the band, who was my numero uno, they just had families and they had other things and they had certain requests that they needed to happen in order for us to go on tour. I couldn't meet those requests, right. man. Mm -hmm. I I wasn't getting Madonna money, yeah. you know? In other words, Charles is being very modest. <laughs> He's being very modest because I was there through those years, mm -hmm. and I own a bar, and we opened a bar downtown, and we opened that bar because Charles put his effort from his influence in this it's just because uh Time. they might not be able to hear you uh -huh. but i'm saying justin is here and he's talking about that he mm -hmm. opened a bar mm -hmm. and uh based on what charles I'll, was I'll, doing i was in the conversation that charles is being modest mm -hmm. his okay. influence in grand junction yeah in the music scene i've been here for 20 years i opened a bar 10 years ago with some good friends yeah this man is influenced not only when he earlier was talking about working at the dinner theater, mm -hmm. but when his contract ended, he decided to stay here. Me and my friends didn't know what to do with our life. This man, his influence and his music, decided to let us open a bar because of who he was as a person. Yeah. His influence left when he when he left. You could feel it. Mm. You could feel that King and his naughty bunnies weren't here anymore. Right. You could feel a change in the town. You were talking about how much did you make on that opening night? Fifteen grand, man. Fifteen k. It, it was crazy because we didn't have any money. Like I was like, I don't know what to do. Like we, I went to the bank and I'm like, here's our drawer. We have two drawers. Here's a thousand, a thousand. We don't have any money in the bank. <laughs> <laughs> and then all of a sudden, at like five o'clock, I'm like. There's a line past the pawn shop down 7th Street. Mm. And I'm like, and Charles like, I'm ready to go. He had a tutu on that night, too. I oh, wear a tutu. <laughs> I rock tutus. Right? I love I that. that. I love putting masculine and feminine together. Yeah. Like, you know, and some people, like like my mentor, RuPaul, that, that's called Skag Drag. And, um, you know, where you put that masculine and feminine together, very punk rock. I am yeah. punk rock cool. <laughs> I so I love punk rock you yeah. know and so but yeah like I, what I was saying though is like I you know at the beginning there were times I did feel that I there was an influence and in, or I had a something to do with the scene you know and then sometimes it's it's that's kind of a, a double-edged sword so when people do like you and when you are influencing and inspiring they're also as soon as they feel you, that everybody. you got something or or whatever then that's when people want to start being nasty about things and then they want to try to bring you down and and mm -hmm. this town is small did and you when, feel jealousy um, i felt jealousy but i also felt not jealous what's weird see i think about the human condition 
expedition in a different way. Okay. Like I know most people would have felt jealousy, but what I felt is I felt those people hurting mm -hmm. because they automatically thought that, oh, someone is going to do this. They're moving up. And, and when you have that fear, then all of a sudden you start reacting in ways that are not right. That's why they're not with me right now. Well, and that's, that's not that's all of them. That's insightful. But it's like, like that. Yeah. they start thinking, yo, you're going to leave us or you're not, or you're going to be this type of person. And that's not the case. I tell uh, anyone who messes with me, I say, you fuck with Chuck, you stuck with Chuck. Mm -hmm. And that's what it is. Like you, if you are in my life, mm -hmm. you are in my life forever. And there are some people that I, man, it can be 10 years. And because I'm lucky enough to travel and work, I pop up in their towns, man. And I'm like, yeah. boop, 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 boop. And that's the thing, because that's it, it, my heart is real. And so, unfortunately, that's what happened with some musicians that I dealt mm -hmm. with. Um, some musicians, because I couldn't give them what they wanted and needed. Mm -hmm. um, and some musicians joined just because they thought there was going to be something. And, you know, uh, but you got to put in the work, man. The people are not willing to put in the work. I was watching mm -hmm. um, that Beyonce documentary, like, where she at Coachella and she was talking she was like people don't like to rehearse because people don't like to do the work and people when you rehearse you fall because you're learning stuff mm -hmm. people don't like to see themselves fall mm -hmm. but you have to I rehearse I rehearse I rehearse and the thing is is even all that rehearsing things still happen right, you know right. and so but I, I'm dedicated enough to put that rehearsing rehearsal in because I just want to I want to be great and you know right. and it's and I want my job is to whatever you're going to feel from my experience when you come to my concert yeah. I, I you know I know that I'm supposed to make you walk out of there loving yourself and not just loving yourself but also learning a lot of stuff too yeah. you know cause Definitely. that's just what it is my music blah 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 sorry bro no but man yeah. you're, straight, you're straight you're straight but I will say there is a, a gentleman who does um um writes a magazine here and I was talking to him and he saw me. It's really hard as a performer. I go to other shows. I don't go to a lot of shows often, but like even just whenever I'm watching anybody else perform, mm -hmm. anyone who knows me will maybe see me well up or tear up because I'm always like, man, like I should be up there. Like, and it's not a jealousy. It's like, mm -hmm. a, it's not, I know what I want for myself, you right. know? And this dude saw me and he was like, hey, can I say something to you? I was like, what's up? He was like, you have no idea that when it, like you coming in and out of this town. He said, but I see artists that you don't even know who are coming up in this town that you have influenced. Your mm. hustle, not just your stage, not just what you do, not just copying, oh, how you sing, but you, I, every time I get to perform, I say, step it up, step it up, step it up, because it may, who knows, it may not be, it may be my last performance. Right. So I got to act like it's my last, you right. know? And um, I get, that makes me happy. Like if people see my hustle and that inspires them, great and if you if it inspires you to compete with me even better and that's what hip-hop is like it hey you see that hustle i respect that hustle and i man i want that too right. and that's what i'm going for so you do what you gotta do i'll yeah. still mop the floor with you right. but do what you gotta do well, for the record i don't think anybody in this town seems like you yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, but artists have competition i told them that Artists do. They're uh, artists are competitive. I had to do. I'm, a, I'm a painter, but I told him, like, you know, I missed, I missed hanging out with you recently. And I was like, because when I hang out with you, you make me want to do better art. Right. Because I see what you're doing, and I'm like, oh no, no, that's not gonna happen. Right. I'm like, no, I'm, I got I got to do a step better. Art, yeah. I gotta do art, a step better. art is a competitive game. It that's is. Just, that's just the, that's the nature of the beast. It is, and, and I, that's what keeps art elevating. I, like, I want, yo, like, that's sometimes, what it, sometimes when I talk to Charles and like, I want a painting. And when I look at one of my paintings, I want it on the wall, and I want to look at Charles and go like, yeah. Don't you wish you could sing like that? <laughs> y'all, shut up. This is my, y'all, this, and then, exactly. Legit, though. Legit. That example is the like, type you, of. You do something nobody can do, right? Those are the and type of artists and people that I hang out with. I hang out with a bunch of creators, <laughs> yeah. and, you know, and even though the creation is not what they're doing for a living, um, most of them it is, but some of them it isn't. Like, we just, that's just how we are. And it's it's not trying to one-up the other. Well, maybe it is, man. Yeah, it's Here's the deal. It's competitive. And, and that's the deal. Like, and I'm, I even grew up like that 
it with my grandmother. Like she, you not, man, if you're going to put your effort into anything, why not put your absolute best? Right. Why not want to be the best? Show out. And, Show and out. that's the deal of it. And you yeah. know, I don't, sometimes I have been blessed. I've gotten to sing at Carnegie Hall. I sang with Tia Carrera. Do y'all know who Tia Carrera is? I don't. Okay, a little part of Chaz Roy history, aka right. Charles K. Um, in New York City, I got to sing at Carnegie Hall. We know what Carnegie Hall yeah. is. Oh, yeah. With Tia Carrera, who is the beautiful, beautiful um, a woman who was in. She's a singer and stuff. And I, I, I don't know exactly her. I, I know she's Hawaiian, okay. and, but she encompasses many more things. But she was in Wayne's World. She was Wayne's oh. World's girlfriend. Like, oh, like do you remember that yeah. gorgeous yeah. Tia yeah. Carrera? Yeah. 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 Yes. Yeah. This one. That's okay. saying with Tia Carrera. Oh, wow. How'd you, how'd you hook up with that? I, just, man, <laughs> working hard in the city. And there was a wonderful company that I was already working with. Um, um, with I, I want... Um, 2G, if I'm correct, but it was actually um, Welly went. See, I wish I was that guy. I'll be better with names. But anywho, right, right. you can cut this out. But there was a group that I worked with that that's how um, I was able to sing with Tia Carrera. So and we sang you Man in the Mirror. You these relationships and all these places you go, mm -hmm. and those re relationships eventually bear fruit. That's right. right. Amen. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. That's yeah. exactly. I could. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> that's yeah. exactly what has well, that's happened. What that, but that's what, that's what happens when you don't burn bridges. And yeah. You're a good dude. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. Because good things happen to good people. Yeah. And sometimes I felt like, oh, have I burnt bridges by, because I don't stay in one place or, or you know, in New York, that made me, a lot of times you can feel that you burnt bridges just because you're not doing what someone wants you to do and you're not being that yes man. I think that could be in any town though. Yeah. Because, you know, people, when they see a talent like, you they they might see a meal ticket They're like all right, if mm. i can if i can connect with charles and we can get this going and like this man like i see myself like in a better position mm -hmm, and then you're mm -hmm. like all right i'm gonna go to alaska all right i'm gonna go to the islands yeah. or i'm gonna go to new york or yeah. i'm gonna go to tennessee or i'm gonna go do this like wait 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 what about what about what about what about exactly like, hey, that and that mean, makes people upset yeah, and i yeah. get that yeah. i get that but the thing is is like no one in this journey i have definitely had support and i've definitely had people who are down for the game but mm -hmm. when it comes to other the artists and working with them mm -hmm. um, you know they have other lives I don't have children mm -hmm. I'm not married and mm -hmm. I am okay with that yeah. and so I don't have to those things don't hold me back right. like I can still travel mm -hmm. and in order to if you want the world to know you how are you going to get the world to know you right. you can't get the world to know you by sitting in one place right. and no one else is doing it for me mm -hmm. I don't have an agent that's pushing me out there I don't have a manager mm -hmm. or a record label so guess what I believe in my Myself enough to do it so I'm gonna make it happen right. I've arrived I've decided to myself sometimes hey I'm gonna go to this state or hey I'm gonna go to this part of the world and I'm just gonna go there and then I book gigs there mm. just because that, that's just how I work that's trust. because you trust you trust the process there you go you trust yourself because nobody else is doing it. No yeah. one's calling my phone telling me to do this stuff. Mm -hmm. I do it. And anyone in my, my family, my close circle, and they know I am constantly auditioning. Mm -hmm. I'm constantly sending press out. I'm constantly trying to put myself out there. Um, and sometimes it's been with mega blessed results. And sometimes it's been no results. Yeah. And I've been told no, just like everybody else, right. so many times, right. you know. And... I still feel there's so, I have a long, long, long way to go, yeah. but you create I, opportunities for yourself. There you go. And that's and a, that's a hustle. Yeah. Like and that's a hustle. And, and, and straight up, like you're a hustler, man. Yeah. You create opportunities and you go get, you go get it. Yeah. Instead of waiting, a lot of people just sit there with their hand out waiting for it to come to them. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, so I think that could be an inspiration to a lot of young artists Thank out you, there. Man. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Cool, man. Well, I think like through all this talking that we talked about, I think you know, the message is there. I think the message of resiliency, fighting back, bouncing back and working and hustling and pushing yeah. like, yo, like any young artist out there, like I could ask you right now, like if you guys message for a young artist, I think they just listen to what we just we just our discussion right there. That's the message right there. Awesome, yeah? bro. I hope because, so. Because that's yeah. Yeah, that's cool. So tell us. Tell us. Uh, 
tell us what's next for you, man. Like, what's what's going on with you now? Because I know you. I was talking to you. I was like, we need to get together and have a sit down. Yeah. And you said we better do this because I'm about to go somewhere. What's yeah. Going I, on I with love you? this dude. I love Vinny Boo because first of all, you you're so real, and then you also just the support that you have for artists that that you that that you that you. That you Back home, we say that you fuck with. I'm sorry, right. you know. Right. Um, um, Appreciate that. Yeah, you know, and that's that's wonderful. And so to be able to even share this. So, but yeah, um, right now I have been blessed to be like I'm now stepping into um, brand ambassador type of situations. Okay. Um, I am. It's been cool. I'm happy, man. It's been cool. Brand ambassador stuff, and as well as getting sponsors to help with stuff. And um, I'm about to do a mini tour. So I'm going to go. I'll be in New York. I'll be in New York, Maryland, um, then through Denver, then Alaska, and then Hawaii. Okay. So, and and that's also another home built thing. It ain't like people calling me. But right. um, in this moment, in this journey from working hard, um, I, I will have sponsors. Um, for this go round of the tour and I'm cool. really excited man and um, just doing just really trying to connect with with branding myself mm -hmm. as well as connecting with other businesses out there because I support them I enjoy what they offer mm -hmm. and why not put the two together yeah. you know and I've been lucky to do that and my first one was with Expedia.com mm -hmm. and then I got some things coming out with Puma shout out to Puma, Puma. and I'm excited yeah, about deep. that yeah. and um, right now a huge highlight in my life is I um, there was a woman and this is I really want to say this for local folks young oh I don't care when I say young people I mean young just people who got goals man you know mm -hmm. and people who got dreams and it doesn't matter the age and right. um i there was a a, a woman um S serendipity johnson who wrote a book um animals get funky with it you know or animals get funky from a to z and it's she wrote a book and then after that she got together a collective group of artists and we recorded an album that was inspired from the book okay. and from that and I knew this was going to happen it's just a feeling and this Sarah her, her stage name is Serendipity but her name is Sarah she's just mm -hmm. such an exquisite person mm -hmm. and she wants this world to be a better place truthfully yeah. and um, because of that and through all that hard work it inspired a television show and so tomorrow um, right. at 6 30 um, p.m. September 5th okay. um, the television show premieres and because of hard work I, and I kept sticking with her I am blessed to be a part of that television okay, show cool. and um, I'm in quite a few episodes and Yay. it's gonna be pretty cool and it's called Enchanted Planet. Enchanted so, Planet. And, and how do people find that? Um, you can go watch it on Rocky Mountain PBS okay. and you um, it is going to be every Sunday in September and um, um, who knows? There may be another season or something. Beautiful. Who knows? Cool. <laughs> All right. Rocky Mountain PBS. We got to check that out. Enchanted Planet. Enchanted Planet. Rocky right. Mountain PBS. And um, you can see Chaz Roy doing his thing. And You know what time it is? Do you know what time oh, it is? Oh, friend, I know what time it is. Hell. Hello, friend. Hello, friend. It's Dance Party Dance party. Dance party. Dance party. Dance party. Dance party. Dance now. Dance. 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 I was lucky to have support. I have a mentor, my mentor, Betsy Boy. Um, it's just one of the very few. And she, you know, I was that youth. So Serendipity, this show is very um, connected and very, I, I, I'm going to say the word, in, uh, I want to say indicative, but I don't know if that's the right word to say, but it is very, uh, it reflects shows like um, Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood okay. and things like that. It's for the kids. It's for the kids. Yeah. It is a kid show, and I know I said some swear words, but I still am kid-friendly, right, and uh, right. you'll see the show. It's it's so much fun, man, and we get the kids to dance. We get we um, teach them about their feelings. We talk, you know, just how to know your worth and be proud of who you are and teach them about different 
cultures and mm -hmm. that something like that hasn't happened in a long time where it's created and yeah. boys and girls that's created out of your town that's out of junction nice. and um it's happening and it's pretty pretty cool how'd you guys get plugged in with that did you said sarah, got, sarah she did the connecting sarah did the connecting the well she worked hard man she's always worked with youth and she's always is she done here these in, books. In junction? she is here in junction okay. and she's always done these book series you know and she's just a really wonderful wonderful woman and she she sees talent too mm -hmm. recognizes it and mm -hmm. I, there are a lot of wonderful grand junction artists that are on that album and zach Grant is just one, and if you know Junction, you know Zach from Zola. Right, and right. you know, and a, a shout out to a lot of actual bands in Junction that you know I talked about. Like, there's some discourse with some things, but I also do have a lot of support and people like Zola, um, like Bobby Hoedown, um, like you know, all these folks. They were. They're very they, they're instrumental also in my career and in my push. Because yeah. whenever I'm back in town, they put me up on that stage nice. and they make sure that I'm visible, you know, and it's pretty, pretty darn cool. And I love it. What, what local bands, like, since we're on that, like mm -hmm. what local bands do you really connect with or are you, are you feeling? And who's like really like pushing you in the right direction and helping you like when you come to town and say, I right. say Zoloff. Zoloff reminds me of that spirit of Lion. Um, um, the Lion vibes. Lion Remember yeah. the Lion oh, yeah. vibes? Yeah. And when the Lion vibes were popular here, they were another band that we connected and they made sure because I'm not the guy that just stays right. and makes and the cool town happy. Cool you know, and yeah. they made sure that I was visible all the time. Yeah. But um, Zoloff has that energy of the Lion vibes, that hard work. Yeah, um, it was Zoloff who inspired me and who let me know that let go of fear you can build a tour on your own. Mm -hmm. You can go out there and you can make it happen. Mm -hmm. And I would sit and talk to Zach. You know, not everybody in this business wants to give you advice on how they got there. Mm -hmm. I would talk to Zach and I would say, Zach, how are you getting these tours? How are you doing this? Mm -hmm. Zach would talk to me and tell me. And he put some game on you? Put some game on me. And there are other artists, bro. Gonna I'm not going to share that with you because yeah. what if you come up before me? Uh, and it's not about that, dude. Because yeah, yeah. my thing is this, you fuck with Chuck, you stuck with Chuck. Mm -hmm. And if I come up, guess what? We come up. Mm -hmm. And that's the deal. Mm -hmm. You know? And um, yeah, I've been very lucky. And so, like I said, Zoloff, um, I love Bobby Hoedown. We're good friends, so it's not, uh, people going to say you're biased because right. great friends with both those dudes, mm -hmm. but they're doing something that's so unique mm -hmm. and that's so different and you know and they're stepping up the game and make it they have made me for this tour i had to step it up because after i saw them perform i'm like man that's two people up there on stage two, and yeah. it feels like there's 10. yeah how do you do that yeah that's amazing to me mm -hmm. switching around playing instrument to instrument right. telling a story mm -hmm. you know and that's what they're doing and you know I've been lucky to see some of the greatest people that have always inspired me um, and I you know I've seen Aretha Franklin live mm -hmm. I've seen um, um, I've seen Michael Jackson live I've seen Madonna live I've seen Janet Jackson live right. I've seen Run DMC live oh, I've yeah. seen LL Cool J live uh -huh. you know and it stems all those things. and yeah. trust me there's rock people and it's just when I see their shows and I know they've got million dollar budgets right but I don't know man like I I, I'm all, I know I'm at that level. I just yeah. don't have that money. Right. But that doesn't mean that I can't provide that type of level of show. Right. And I work really hard to try to do that. They might have all that money around them, but they got to still do that work. There you go. Yeah. There you go. And yeah. it's bands like Bobby Hoedown that showed me that. Like, you don't have to have a lot of money, and you can still make someone feel like they just stepped out of that show. I also saw Ooh. Guy Got Live. Ooh. And I say this because each of those experiences, when I saw those people live I know people are like Charles this doesn't happen but I'm here to tell you 
I, I connected with all those people mm -hmm. and I had those chances and mm -hmm. some of them I got to talk to personally face to face mm -hmm. and some of them I, it was just a look and I bring that up because it was Gaga it was a look wow. and it's a thing man it's a so yeah and also in the development is making a better Chazworth channel um, like I said I am more than just a singer more than just a songwriter more than just a producer more than just yeah. an actor and so that's and people have always come up to me and they're like well what are you going to do what, what type of channel you gonna do what do you want to do and I'm just man I'm just gonna put me out there that's the yeah. bad my adventures my journeys with people mm -hmm. and you know and that's that's what my channel is gonna be cool. and that's gonna be coming out real soon so so if uh, people want to like get in connection with your music and get you connection that? with my music I'm on Spotify I'm pretty much on every platform that you can imagine and that's Chaz Roy um, that's Chaz Roy okay, yep cool. that's Chaz Roy we'll put some We're, links and put that yeah text up man there. and a shout out to my people in Brazil shout out to my people in Switzerland and shout out to my um, people in um, Chile like I, dude it's crazy when when folks do dig the music mm -hmm. it's it's crazy the presence that they feel and it, it they let you know it and it, things have been going really well in Brazil and in um, Switzerland. And cool. It's cool. Europe. Shout out to Georgia. Atlanta's doing well. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You got some peeps out there. You got some peeps out there. All right, man. All right, Chaz. So we're going to wrap this up a little bit, okay. but we're going to end this kind of on a fun note right okay. here. We call okay. this, uh, I kind of call it the hot seat, but it's just a series of questions. It's a little bit fun. Okay. So I'm going to ask you some questions and you kind of tell me just like, bam, off your head, off. wherever it is. Okay, okay. You can't be right or you can't be wrong, but I just, we just want to know a little bit about where you're coming from okay. related to these questions. Uh, and this is the fun part right I'm here. Smiling the I'm hot just... seat. Okay. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Chaz Roy. Uh -huh. What's Chaz Roy's favorite food? <sighs> Breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> that's good, that's good. <laughs> Specifics. <laughs> Specifics. <laughs> yeah, you... Eggs. Eggs, all right, all right. eggs, scrambled eggs with cheddar cheese all the way, and put syrup on it. There you go. And mm. for those that are being healthy, you know, you can do some egg whites and then do some of that fake cheese, and, and then, then put, some syrup on and it. Put, some, put some honey on it. You know? all right. That's fair. That's fair. That's fair. Do you have any? Uh, do you have any phobias? Hmm. <sighs> Not phobias. I like to be scared. I yeah. like to get scared. I don't know mm -hmm. what that issue is, but like I love a good horror movie. I'm trying to think phobias. Spider snakes. No, see when I see like snakes freak me out, but because they freak me out, I'm more intrigued than I always, whenever I have huh. opportunity to get to a snake, right. I have a picture of me holding a snake recently too. And you don't like snakes? It terrifies me. <laughs> but I need to hold it. I need to yeah. face it. But it, they're, that's weird. That, that might be that control thing that, you talked about earlier. You, you need to get, what's out of control of you, you find a way to control yeah. it. Yeah. Be yeah. Last minute notes. <laughs> Oh well, yeah. Ah, <laughs> phobia. Yeah, I don't know. I really don't. I don't think. I don't feel I have a phobia. Right. You know. Fair enough. Fair enough. Uh, if you could collab with anyone, dead or alive, who would that be? Oh man! Wow. Oh man. There's man. It's a simple question. It's a simple question, okay? I'm trying to... Uh, you got all these faces going through your head right now. I do because it's like, man, dude, is it producer or is it artist? Is it... Because I know the game on all sides. Like, right. and I'm here to tell you... Who would you it, like to work with? Who? Yeah, yeah. Okay. It was an easy question. I'm so sorry, y'all. It's too many people. Jesus Christ. No, well, of course. <laughs> but. Abraham Lincoln, Barack Obama. <laughs> Man, this is crazy because I. It's like I want to put a team together. See, here we go. That control issue. Give me some Here's team. My team. Give me a team. Give Here's me a team. my team. I, and these are all people Here. for different reasons. Here's my team. Hey, wait, so, wait, wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. All right, who, what's your team? What's your team? All right, my team would be Clive Davis. Ooh. Um, Mark Ronston. I hope I'm saying his name right. Um, Jill Scott. Oh. The Roots. Erica Badu. George Michael and Lady Gaga. Ooh. And that's my team. That's a nice team. 
and on the sidebar working with them but nobody really knows that I'll be working with them that's a part of that team Jay-Z and Beyonce there you go so any of our God guys I don't know it's like Charles who's gonna yeah right you got that money but it's because I uh, those producers and those people like just man just what they create and there's many many more man yeah, yeah, there's yeah. many more you gotta make some hits right yeah, there like if I had the time like I freaking go secretly go hit up Andre 3000 and Gwen Stefani just because of one song they did together yeah. and I'll be like Use me, like not yeah, use yeah. me, but utilize me. Yeah, teach yeah, me, yeah, yeah. teach me, and you know, I just got hey, respect hey, for hey, great just people. Out of curiosity, if you had to pick one, who would it be? If you had to pick one, if I had to pick one, who would it be? Judy Garland. Ooh. Whoa, wasn't even on the list. Didn't expect that. Awesome. I'm here that way, y'all. We can go all day. You this. just saw the truth of me. All right. All That's right. it. Sorry. Right. Sorry about it. All right. This one's a little. This one could be a little. Uh, uh, okay. This, here's one on, the, on a different note. Mm -hmm. If you could change one thing about yourself, what would it be? I spent too many years, though I fight, 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 and uh, not fight, but you know what I mean, like mm -hmm. I, with that strength and resilience, um, still no matter what, um, I'm a very sensitive person and I'm a cancer and I, I, what I would change about myself is the, the perception that I think people have of me, mm -hmm. worrying about that perception. Mm -hmm. okay. You can have whatever the hell perception right, you right. want. And I know that now. So but like from a sensitivity from aspect. From a sensitivity aspect. Like yeah. I wish I would be like, cause I, I feel that I definitely would be a, a look further if I wouldn't have allowed such things to knock me off my feet because what's weird is like like I can go through a lot of challenges and a lot of physical challenges and all that but it's that tiny that tiny word that tiny um, and Madonna her recent album she speaks on that but it's true it's that tiny word that tiny mm -hmm. you get all the praise and the one that naysayer one, and that's, the, that's what sticks with you that for the one they say hey I'm a cancer too so I totally I'm with yeah. you on that and it's, it's weird it's rough yeah it's rough. And so I just want to me too I, I've I gotten better so. yeah. at letting it go and I've gotten better at understanding that it has nothing to do with me it yeah. is merely a reflection of that own that other person's reality right just right. like we all look through everything in a different lens yes. that's why I love about this world that's what yeah. I love about a creator that's what I love about being able to be a part of playing this game mm -hmm. when we all leave here what I experience it's is not going to be it's yeah. different from what everyone else experienced yeah. in this room and when we go back to share it with someone or or I say regurgitate the information we're not going to tell the same story sure. and it don't mean that somebody's lying right. it's just that how wonderful and how complex we are yeah. and how complex our world is and yeah. it's just that simple so i've learned to just let that shit go mm -hmm. and let that stuff go kids mm -hmm. and um it's all good i'm pretty cool and I like it. It's, it and, it's, it's hard. It's, it's hard. Work. It but takes work. It takes a lot of work. Yes. And I'm still, I'm still in it, man. It takes a lot of work. You know, all right, all it right. does. All right, man. Last question here. One piece of advice, and I'm sure you have more than one, okay, but I'll like a one. really important piece of advice mm -hmm. for a young artist coming up. Try to, and I've learned this in my older years. Um, learned it from such people like RuPaul. Oh, I want to work with you too, Ru. Sorry about that. <laughs> so, uh, but on the real uh, frequency, RuPaul talks about frequency a lot. I understand about that frequency because I felt it all my life. I am a very empathic person. Very, you know, about vibrational vibration. Frequency? Yeah, uh, like uh, knowing, knowing, knowing your will, knowing how to get in, knowing when to get in, you know, mm -hmm. and um, also to me, knowing that frequency is knowing who you are. Mm -hmm. um, I grew up in a time where I would hear, you won't hear that these days, mm -hmm. but I would hear literally being who I am was not going, I wasn't gonna get work. Mm 
Mm-hmm. So I'm just saying, understand your frequency now. Try to tune into it now. Mm-hmm. Find out who, try th- that discovery. Start trying mm-hmm. to do it now because it took me years and years and years. And, and I was constantly, I was being who they were going to pay me to be. Mm-hmm. So I, I, I'm the type of dude, like I say, I work. So I study and I'm like, mm-hmm. huh, so you want that? Okay, I'm gonna, I want that job. So mm-hmm. that's who I'm going to be. And that's how I'm going to get that job. Mm-hmm. But I have found much more joy much more success, much more happiness, the more I am me. So it's more like that internal work. It's the, yes, I was gonna say it's the weirdest thing, but it's the truth. The more that I am me, the better the situation is. And when I am completely my true self, the more the talent is seen. So, because I can go into any house, I can go into one of my first experiences on tour when I signed with the independent record label, that was a hip hop tour, Mm -hmm. me on a hip hop tour. Mm -hmm. And I was like, well, how am I going to do this? Am I going to wear what I want to wear and all this stuff and blah, blah, blah. And on that tour, I was like, okay, well, I can't wear my tutu. How are they going to know I'm me? But I did, I I was like, man, fuck this. I'm going to wear what I want to wear. I'm going to do the things that I want to do. And I have to just be me. And I had a room full of hip hoppers. I mean, nailing it to my music. At that time, it was popular that when you had a towel and you mm-hmm. thought, I got to show this. Like, oh, I can't find a towel right now. But you just do that. Mm-hmm. And, and you, from where I'm from, that's when somebody in it. Mm-hmm. And these are like hip hop men, man. Yeah, and I'm not yeah. up there rapping on stage. Right, right. And I'm definitely giving you my masculine, my feminine, my everything, my mm-hmm. unicorn, you know. Mm-hmm. And those men respected that because music is music. And that's what hip hop is. It yeah. is a it don't matter what you up there doing. You bring it and just respect. And people may say you don't know hip hop, but that's the that's what I get from hip hop. Right. Like I can do it, 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 man. If a person from another genre is up there gigging to your music and mm-hmm. stuff, and such a thing that is so opposite from what I do, you know, like yeah, I don't know. I did not answer that question. I don't think I did. Well, you went you went on, but it, I think the, the gist of it is it was is a little vague. Tapping yeah. into the tapping into the who you really are, yeah. and being true to what you really what you're really about. Thank because you. Because game recognize game. That's just the way it is. Thank you. Some people can say it more eloquently <laughs> than I can, boys and girls. But um, oh, that's right. the truth of it. Thank you, man. Yeah. I'm so grateful. All right, Charles Ray. Hey, I'm so happy to be able to sit down with you Thank and you. share your story. I think it's going to hopefully inspire some people, make some people think, brings a realization to like what's really cracking in the world, and uh, and give people hope, man. And, Thank you, man. And educate some young people on how to, like, navigate some of the experiences that you've navigated so absolutely chaz roy bam boom right here give me some love i love love you brother yeah i love you baby thank you so much so much man thank you i was terrified about this interview Terrified. Yeah, I, I terrified really was, bro. Yeah, and was. that's what took me. And I told him that. And that's what took me so long to say. I always, from the moment we talked about it, I said yes, yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. But to actually take the steps and to do it, like man, I, I was terrified <laughs> about this thing.